Subterra Mundus is a giant hidden cave system populated by prehistoric flora and fauna. It is lit by an unknown gaseous element that replicates days and nights in tandem with the tides of the surface. Entrances all around the world have allowed organisms from the Mesozoic and Cenozoic to find their way into this hidden world. Once there, they diversified into new families and species. While dinosaurs ruled the lands, the skies were ruled by their flying cousins, the pterosaurs. Tapajarids were a highly unusual family of pterosaurs. They are distinguished by their massive crests composed of bony prongs and skin. Unlike almost all other pterosaurs, they appear to have fed primarily on fruit and other plant matter rather than meat. Equally unusually, the young of some species seem to have had some adaptations for climbing trees, an adaptation otherwise known only from one other family of pterosaurs. An early branch of Subterramundian tapajarids has taken the ability to climb to another level. Their limbs became shorter, their claws became curved, and the first digit on their hands and feet became opposable for gripping branches. With less frequent use, their wing fingers were also drastically reduced in size. Although they lost their ability to truly fly, the ancestral patagia was retained. These pterosaurs now use their reduced wings to glide between the canopies of open forests. This gives them an advantage over the similarly sized arboreal mammals they share the canopy with. The ability to leap and glide great distances from tree to tree allows the pterosaurs to maintain a wide feeding range even in open forests, while arboreal mammals need to stay in denser canopies. The arboreal tapajarids of this family are known as Simeopterids. This family is highly diverse, with three main subfamilies specializing for different general niches. These subfamilies are the Megalophids, Microrhynchids, and Ceratolophids. The Megalophids are the most basal family of the Simeopterids. They retain the large, tupendactylus-like crests of their ancestors, which are still used as display structures. As such, they are brightly colored and decorated with striking patterns, which the males use to impress females. The wing fingers of megalophids are shorter than those of their ancestors, but longer than those of other semiopterids. They can still flap to gain height, but this is only borderline flying. This allows them to live in open forests with wide, empty spaces. Being able to traverse such great distances also means that megalophids have a very wide feeding range. They can travel many tens of miles in a single day searching for food. Megalophid semiopterids are herbivorous with all genera preferring small to medium-sized fruits and fresh leaves. Some species are specialists for only one or two types of fruit. Their long beaks are well designed to snip foliage from the branches and grasp soft fruit. Juveniles and smaller species will also eat insects when available. Microrhynchid semiopterids are a family characterized by their short heads and strongly curved beaks. Their beaks are adapted for the strength and sturdiness needed to process tough foods like hard nuts, fruits and seeds. Like with megalophids, many species are specialists preferring very particular foods. As their diet of seeds and small nuts doesn't support particularly large body sizes, most species of microrhynchids are similar in size to large parrots. Out of all semiopterids, microrhynchids are the most vocal. As the lowest in the food chain, they have a high number of warning calls for various predators. Their warbling, chattering calls 
also serve to disorient predators with sensitive hearing. Although short, the crests of these little pterosaurs are vividly coloured and are used to signal other members of their species and impress potential mates. Many species also have distinctive eye spots on their lower jaw crests to confuse predators. Although not always effective, these eye spots do provide a sufficient enough advantage that they are a common enough feature in other semiopterids as well. The most diverse family of semiopterids are the ceratolophids. This family includes generalist omnivores, food specialists, insectivores, and even one nectarivorous genus. The ceratolophids are the main reason why primates in Subteramundus have struggled to establish themselves. As they are the most diverse of a family with so many different genera and species, they occupy most of the large arboreal niches. Out of all the semiopterids, the ceratolophids are the most attentive parents. Females will lay only a handful of eggs and raise the hatchlings until they can survive on their own. Ceratolophids are fairly intelligent, with some species even using simple tools to get food. They are among the most intelligent pterosaurs of Subteramundus. They also have excellent binocular vision, thanks to their wide set, partially forward facing eyes, which helps them move through the trees at high speeds. The largest of all living semiopterids is Gorillonis. Males of the species can reach up to 3 meters tall at the shoulder, making this one of Subteramundus' largest pterosaurs. Gorillonis is part of a subgroup of ceratolophids that have entirely lost the ability to glide in favor of a near fully terrestrial lifestyle. This also makes it the only truly flightless pterosaur in Subteramundus. Although Gorillonis spent much of their time on the ground, they are still capable of climbing and swinging through the trees, much like certain apes. Gorillonis is also surprisingly strong for a pterosaur due to its unusually dense bones. Although not entirely solid, the bones of this pterosaur are denser than those of other pterosaurs due to its terrestrial lifestyle. Gorillonis is primarily frugivorous, although it will supplement with certain fungi, various tuberous ground plants, and the occasional egg or small animal. Through its dung, Gorillonis spreads the seeds of many different types of plants making it very important in the lives of a lot of subteromundian flora, as well as certain fungi. Like other ceratolophids, both male and female are highly attentive parents that spend many months raising their young. The female will lay one or two pairs of eggs and protect them from predators. Both parents will feed and guide the young in the ways to survive in the forests of Subtramundus. Males have elaborate courtship rituals that involve flashing their shimmering feathers and crests, performing elaborate dances, and demonstrating complex vocalizations to showcase their health and suitability for mating. Females engage in the courtship by trying to invade the male's dance to see if he gives up. If he remains persistent and continues his dance, she will judge him worthy. Gorillonus are preyed upon by some of the theropods that live in the deep undergrowth. Although the pterosaur might appear defenseless compared to a large theropod, even an adolescent Gorillonus is far from helpless. Their beaks are quite strong, able to crack fruit and bones alike. Even a sharp peck can puncture skin and cause bleeding. The sharp claws are not only well suited for slashing, but also for gripping sticks and branches to swing at predators in defense. 
when a Gorolona stands up and spreads its comically short wings, it is a warning not to be taken lightly. Semiopterids may have given up their flight, but they have gained a significant diversity. Their many adaptations to life in the trees make these pterosaurs the masters of the canopies. Aside from the Simeopterids, there is only one other family of Tapajarids in Subterra Mundus. While they too seem to be descended from arboreal ancestors, this family has retained the ability to fly. This family contains the largest flying Tapajarid in Subterra Mundus. There are two species of the genus Lepidolophus. Both are widespread frugivores with varying types of fruit determining their ecological differences. Lepidolophus viridis lives in closed forests. This species is the smaller of the two with an average wingspan of 8 to 9 meters. It eats berries and small fruits. L. significans is the larger and more widespread species. Fully grown adults of this species can surpass all Oropterus in size. The largest males can have a wingspan of up to 14 meters, making them one of the biggest flying pterosaurs in Subtramundus. At their size, especially when standing, the Pedalophus are able to look down on most predators, a highly effective form of intimidation. Like the herbivorous Oloropterus, Lepidolophus is rather shy and easily spooked. Unlike Oloropterans, Lepidolophus does not always fly away from danger, but fights back and stands its ground against most major predators. The ability and willingness to fight is strongly enforced by an aposomatic warning coloration of bright, fiery colors and patterns on the crest and wings. These patterns also serve to irritate eyesight-based predators like theropods and carnivorous pterosaurs. By violently shaking their heads, flapping their wings, and shrieking, Lepidolophus can overwhelm a predator's senses, allowing the pterosaur to either strike with its claws and beak, or to fly away. Since these bright colors serve such an important purpose, they are also highly significant in proving a male's suitability as a potential mate. A male will begin the process of trying to attract a female by clearing a space on which to show off. Once a large enough surface has been cleared, he flies off to gather as many fruit and berries as he can and lays them out in a semicircle in front of where he wants to display. This splotch of color is designed to be clearly visible from high above. Along with this visual attraction, the male lets out a long, low drone which can be heard from many miles away. When a potential mate arrives, he will begin a complex mating dance to gain her approval. The male's mating dance is in many ways similar to the threat display, only more coordinated and with soft grunting in place of screaming. Strutting about and spreading the wings is accompanied with flexing of the neck and tail feathers and frequent turning of the head to display both sides of a crest as much as possible. After mating, a male will try to make good use of his showgrounds to attract more partners before the fruit all rot. When that happens, he will abandon them. The showgrounds then become popular with fruit specialists and opportunists like mammals, birds, semiopterids and certain pheropods. Abandoned showgrounds also frequently end up overgrown with plants from the few fruits that are spared by the scavengers. 
While the male tries to attract more partners or wanders off again, the female is left to take care of the offspring. After mating, she will find a secluded spot in the forest to lay her eggs. These she will cover with leaves, sticks, moss and other foliage to incubate them until they hatch. The young stay with their mothers for a few weeks before they are ready to head into the forest on their own. As juveniles, Lepidolophus spend a lot of their time climbing trees, like their ancestors and their flightless relatives. When they grow too large to climb, they spend most of their time on the ground. Lepidolophus are mostly solitary, with females and adolescents often forming loose groups for protection. Adult males do not fancy any company and wander the forests alone. Like the microrinchid semiopterids, Lepidolophus primarily eat fruit and nuts, although at their size, the fruits they eat are significantly larger. Juveniles also eat small animals when they get the chance. Due to their great size, they are capable of reaching high growing fruits that similarly sized browsers cannot get to. Thanks to their arboreal ancestors, Lepidolophus can also stand up on their hind legs and grasp and hold branches while they feed. Lepidolophus is capable of producing the loudest sound of any subterramundian pterosaur. Apart from the normal grunts, hisses and warbles that many tapajarids are capable of producing, this pterosaur also produces a loud droning call. At over 110 decibels, this sound can be especially dangerous to predators with sensitive ears. At close range, this call can do physical damage to the inner ears of other animals. Because of this, Lepidolophus are often left alone. Although not the apex predators of their domain, the Tapajarids of Subtermundus have managed to gain incredible diversity in the many niches that the forests and jungles provide. Thanks for watching! This video is the third part in the four part Pterosaurs of Subtermundus series. The fourth and final part will cover the Thalassodromids. As usual, special thanks to everyone who helped me with ideas for creature design or behavior. Your help and contribution is deeply appreciated. If you like some of the paleo art I made for the series, please consider checking out the merch on my website. The link is in the description. Stay tuned for more pterosaurs. See you in the next one.